An indication of the distance from which information might be retrieved is called a cosmological horizon. The expanding universe, different aspects of general relativity, and the physics of Big Bang cosmology all contribute to this observable restriction. The observable universe's size and scale are determined by cosmological horizons. Despite the possibility that the universe is infinitely large, according to the widely accepted Big Bang theory, we can only observe a small portion of it. The observable cosmos is what we can observe. There are several commonly accepted definitions of cosmic horizons, which are distance restrictions imposed by cosmology. The goal of episode is to attempt a non-technical explanation of these many definitions. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode we will present the universe and what it can be observed over the very large distances. The concept of de Sitter space will be introduced, notion that will be presented in a deeper understanding in the following episodes. The particle horizon, boundary of the observable universe. When we observe a far off galaxy, its light will have traveled to us over a period of millions or even billions of years. The proper distance to the galaxy would be measured if a ruler of cosmological scale could be built between the galaxy and the Earth. This is the distance at a particular moment between the galaxy and Earth. The ideal separation between two distant objects that aren't bound together by gravity grows over time since the universe is expanding. If a light is coming from a galaxy that was at a certain distance away from Earth. But although the photons of the emitted light are going in our direction, the Earth is moving away from them. It takes these photons to get to Earth the time they cover that initial distance plus an additional time to cover more distance, to account for the expansion of the universe during the photon's flight to us. Particle horizon is the theoretical maximum appropriate distance that we can now observe. It surrounds the Earth in a spherical shell with a radius of 46.5 billion light years. The light from an item at the particle horizon will have been emitted at the beginning of the universe and will have been traveling towards us for the whole history of the universe. When we look at distant objects, we are looking back in time. The particle horizon, which serves as the limit of the observable world, contains all the items that we can currently see. The universe is not old enough for an object's light to have traveled to us if it is located beyond the particle horizon. The particle horizon would have been zero at the precise moment of the Big Bang, and as the universe ages, it grows. We know this because light can travel farther before it reaches us as the age of the universe gets older, and as the universe ages, the appropriate distance between two distant objects grows because the particle horizon is the proper distance of the farthest object we can see due to the expansion of the universe. The particle horizon is not actually visible to us. It included a plasma of negatively charged electrons, and positively charged hydrogen and helium ions. Plasma is not conductive to electromagnetic radiation, such as light. The cosmic microwave background, CMB, which was emitted when the universe was just 400,000 years old and at which point it had cooled sufficiently for individual atoms to form, is the oldest radiation that humans are able to detect. Since then, the CMB radiation we see today has been moving in our direction and was produced by a spherical shell of points that are located roughly 46 billion light years away from Earth. The event horizon and Hubble sphere. The recessional velocity and the galaxy's distance are clearly correlated. V is the velocity an object is moving away from us, V equals HD, where D is the object's distance and H is the Hubble constant, roughly 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, if V is expressed in kilometers per second, then D in megaparsecs. The Hubble constant calculates the rate of cosmic expansion. The Hubble constant is actually more appropriately referred to, as the Hubble parameter H, because it fluctuates with time and is typically thought to be declining. The Hubble parameter's current value is known as the Hubble constant. The Hubble constant is now changing at a relatively slow rate. It will take hundreds of millions of years for it to decrease in value by 1%. At a distance from us of more than 4,300 megaparsecs, or 14 billion light years, a galaxy will be receding at a velocity more than 300,000 km per second, which is the speed of light, assuming that Hubble's law is applicable at all distances, meaning at all points in the past. 
any light it released today would not be able to reach us in that circumstance. The Hubble sphere is a hypothetical sphere with a radius of 4,300 megaparsecs that is centered on the Earth. We would only be able to observe objects that emit light today, that are situated inside the Hubble sphere, if the Hubble parameter didn't vary over time. However, because the Hubble parameter is dynamic, we also need to take the event horizon into account. The light created right now will travel from this distance to us in the long future at its greatest proper distance. The light of an object will reach us if it is closer than the event horizon. In fact, when faster than light motion occurs outside of the observer's inertial frame, there is no contradiction with special relativity, and in any event, general relativity, not special relativity, is sufficient to describe the entire universe. Superluminally, distant galaxies are moving away from us. This implies that the light they currently generate cannot be seen by us. They are at rest locally, and special relativity offers a good description of motion in their respective local inertial frames. The Hubble sphere's radius would be the event horizon if the Hubble parameter didn't change throughout time, at 14 billion light years. The Hubble constant's value decreases over time in the majority of cosmological models, despite the fact that the universe is expanding. Overall, this has the result that the event horizon is greater than the Hubble sphere's radius and that the size of the gap between the two evolves over time. There are practical horizons, such as the optical horizon, which is located at the surface of last scattering, even if they are not strictly horizons in the sense of making observations impossible due to relativity or cosmic solutions. This is the maximum distance across which each photon can stream freely. Similar to gravitational waves, there is a gravitational wave horizon established for the most distance at which gravitational waves can freely stream, as well as a neutrino horizon for the greatest distance at which neutrinos can freely stream. The latter is anticipated to provide as a direct test of when cosmic inflation will terminate. When time goes to infinity in an expanding universe, some events will no longer be observable as signals from earlier events are redshifted to arbitrarily long wavelengths in the de Sitter space that is growing exponentially. This establishes a limit on how far out in the future we can see while using the units of proper distance that exist today. Or, more precisely, we can observe events that happened at the same location in space in the distant past, but they are spatially separated from the event happening right now for a certain frame of reference, so we will never receive a signal for those events. Even if we wait an endless length of time, we will continue to receive signals from this position in space, but a signal that was sent from that location today will never reach us. Additionally, the energy and frequency of the signals emanating from that point will gradually decrease until the point effectively ceases to be discernible. In a future version of Kuptine's universe, all objects that are gravitationally unbound with regard to the Milky Way will become unobservable since the universe will be dominated by dark energy and will be expanding exponentially in scale factor. Now, since we have already mentioned the notion of de Sitter space, what is de Sitter space? In the next episodes we will dig deeper into cosmology but, for the moment, let's have a quick look at what de Sitter space is. To give you a strict answer, in mathematical physics, n-dimensional de Sitter space, often abbreviated to DSN, is a maximally symmetric Lorentz manifold with constant positive scalar curvature. It is the Lorentz analog of an n-sphere with its canonical Riemannian metric. De Sitter space is in short an open-like universe that expands forever, it is what our universe is believed to be in the far future, a de Sitter space-like universe. In other words, for everybody to understand, de Sitter space is a concept used in cosmology and theoretical physics, is a solution to the equations of general relativity, which describes a universe with a positive cosmological constant, also known as dark energy, and no matter or radiation. In de Sitter space, the universe expands exponentially, meaning that the distance between any two points in the universe increases at an accelerating rate. This is in contrast to the decelerating expansion we observe in our universe. Despite this difference, de Sitter space is used in cosmological models to describe the universe in the far future, when the accelerating expansion due to dark energy is expected to dominate over the effects of matter and radiation. De Sitter space is named after the Dutch mathematician Willem de Sitter, who first described the space in 1917 as a possible model for the universe. 
It has since been used in various areas of physics, including string theory, inflationary cosmology, and quantum gravity. Please join me next episode when we will discuss other interesting concepts of modern physics. Thank you for watching.